Good morning. With this version of our YouTube, we're back to the RV world. So we've been on the Hummingbird for a while. That's hopefully winding down. Uh, and uh, we're back at the shop working pretty hard here. But one of the things we want to let you know first is, you may have seen this, Vans Aircraft is now carrying our latest maintenance book. So and for those of you lucky enough to uh, be right there where the mothership is, you can walk in the store and they have them right on display in the lobby. So that's good news, and you can order them from Vans and Aircraft Spruce, and of course, us as well. So hopefully all of you are going to consider getting this. It, it really is the maintenance manual for RVs. And so in today's version, uh, what we're going to show you is um, aircraft that came in to us uh, Monday. And uh, my usual intake, the uh, you know, it just didn't sound right, just didn't feel right. So I'll let the video speak for itself, walk you through it. But uh, hopefully it'll be a lesson for those of you with carbureted engines, what to pay attention to, and maybe some things that you ought to pay more attention to as you get upwards of 1,000 hours. Because that's kind of the time frame we're seeing maybe some of these carburetors, 10, 10 years, 1,000 hours, they might need an overhaul. We're starting to see more and more of these floats uh, kind of get heavy sinking in an overly rich mixture. So anyway, enjoy, and thanks for watching. Hi, everyone. Good morning, Vic here at Base Leg Aviation. I don't have my photographer here this morning, so hopefully this is gonna turn out. But uh, in the shop here, working on an RV6. This is a longtime customer, comes to us from uh, either Maryland or Delaware. Really, really neat guy with a history behind him, both military, combat pilot, and Delta. Anyway, he flies an RV9, not a six, sorry about that, it's an RV9. And uh, so interestingly enough, in the process of doing the conditions, uh, inspection this time I'd like to show you. First off, when I did the run-up, I noticed it was very, very rough. So one of the things that we do when an airplane comes to us for a condition inspection is uh, I always try and run it up first, check everything, you know, the engine instruments, see how it runs, etc. If I'm not here when it comes in, I like to listen to them when they taxi up, especially when they're hot. I can tell a lot by what's going on with the engine, whether it needs intake gaskets, it's stumbling, the idle's not right, whatever the case might be. In this case, it was uh, really rough until it got warm and uh, required quite a bit of leaning on the mixture. And uh, so, you know, my initial reaction was it was plugs. And so sure enough, I'm gonna show you these spark plugs here. Uh, and you'll see really, really excessive lead fouling on these plugs. Hopefully you can see that there. I mean, these are the REM 37 BYs. These are actually on the electro air ignition on the bottom. So uh, they're HEs, actually. They got a little wider gap. But you can see they're all, all very much lead fouled. Okay. This is only with 60 hours on these things. Plus, very rich, if you look at this one. Very rich there, okay. So, uh, and they were a little high in the resistance. So anyway, we're going to replace those spark plugs. But more importantly, I decided to take a closer look at the carburetor and see what was going on. And sure enough, and this was in my book. For those of you who already have the book, you'll see this. You can see this carburetor is actually leaking all around this top seam. That's very much indicative, most likely, of a very high float level. Either a float's gotten heavy and it's leaking around the seam now uh, and causing the over-rich condition. So... You know, you got a couple options. You can send the carburetor off for overhaul, or you can just get an overhaul carburetor from Aircraft Spruce. In this case, since the customers come from so far away, that's exactly what we're doing. Uh, had one overnighted, and we'll install that this morning. We'll set up the idle mixture. And for those who are going to do this yourself, here's a little hint, too, is when you're setting up the idle mixture on these things, here's your idle screw in the background, in the back side, aft side of the carburetor. So if you're very, very careful, tie your aircraft down, have somebody in the cockpit, you can actually get come up from underneath the aircraft with a long flat bladed screwdriver and turn this in to adjust the idle. The best way to adjust it, I have found, make sure your engine is nice and warm and you want the idle to be less than 1,000 RPM, so we're on the idle circuit. Above that, you're on the, not on the idle circuit and then this won't have any effect. So somewhere around, you know, between 700, 800 RPMs, what you want to do is turn this screw all the way in. And you'll, if you listen very carefully, you'll hear the engine start to wind up, you know, just go a little bit higher RPMs and then start to stumble. So then back it out a little bit till it's smooth. You can also, if you go the other way, it'll be rich and it'll start to stumble. 
that usually works pretty well. Now you want to make certain you give yourself enough room, you know, if you're not near sea level, you're going to find you're putting that in quite a bit. And then if you go down to the beach Saturday afternoon, it might, it might not idle very well for you, but an easy way is just keep it off the idle circuit. A little higher RPMs will adjust that for you. So you can just leave it for your home base, um, best ground idle. Okay, and then one of the other things I will remind you is make certain when you put it back together, you've got enough throw on your arm here. So it goes stop to stop, right? So if you look real closely here, full forward in this case, by the way, if you watch here, I'll show you how a carburetor works. Watch when I go to full throttle, see the fuel squirt up. All right, we're gonna talk about that in a second. But anyway, um, right here, if you look on full, right in this area, I'm gonna zoom in right here. You want that to go to the full forward position. Make sure you have full throw on your arm so that touches. And then when you come back to idle, you're going to want this to touch the screw head, the other side right there. And then this screw right here is where you adjust the RPMs that you want at idle. So turning this in will make the aircraft engine idle higher. And then backing it out will make it uh, idle lower. Okay. That squirt of fuel I showed you there, that's how an updraft carburetor here works. You know, you taught maybe when you're fine, hey, pump the throttle a couple times. What happens is it squirts fuel straight up into the intake, straight up in the air. That's what happens. It all comes back down. So don't pump unless you're already cranking the engine. That will help suck it up into uh, the intake system. If you pump before you start, it all comes right back down below the carburetor into the air box. And now with a backfire, per chance, you get a chance of an engine fire. So hopefully that visually explains why you should not pump the throttle on a carbureted engine unless you're cranking. Pumping on an injected engine actually does no good. There is no, um, you know, this is called the accelerator pump. There's a little pump down in this bowl. And when you move this, it actually just squirts fuel up there, okay? Uh, for those of you car enthusiasts, yes, it does the same thing in the old carburetors on cars. Pumping that before you start actually worked because it was a downdraft carburetor and it did put the fuel into the intake system. So those habits that you learn driving your car or starting your car, uh, they don't work very well in an aircraft with an updraft carburetor. Okay, hopefully there's your tidbit of the day. Have a good one.